Welcome back, everyone. Real quick, uh, you're about to see a playthrough of the city phase, and I realized after recording the video that I did miss one piece of crucial information, and that is uh, we are playing an example of after the first uh, official quest of the game. So at that point, you should have four heroes that you're playing with, and you make sure to add those four hero cards to your city deck that you use at the beginning. So it's all those initial NPC cards plus your four hero cards. So you may still not uh, draw any of those heroes, but I thought I'd just mention that uh, you do add those four heroes so that does give you a better chance of being able to accomplish some more tasks. All right, welcome back to Flying So Six channel. I'm going to do a quick playthrough of the city phase so you can get a good idea of how that works and uh, the main overview. Okay, so the components of the city phase is the city phase poster, which you see right here. Um, you're also going to have mana cubes, just a collection. It doesn't matter which colors, you're just going to have those. You will have all your city structure cards. Um, I usually, you don't technically need all of them, but I just kind of stack the other ones underneath. Uh, so that way, if we are upgrading, then it's real easy to do so. Uh, so then just put them there like that. Um, you are going to have your initial deck here with uh, all the initial cards. Um, so the one we're uh, playing right now is essentially our week one um, type scenario someone just starting the campaign so you have an idea of what that's like it'll get more complex as you get more uh, more interesting cards as the game moves on and then the last thing is you're gonna have your week one uh, NPC cards and you're only gonna place those out depending on the week that you're playing that city phase so when we get to week two then we'll exchange this deck for all the uh, characters that are in week two. Okay, so how uh, the city phase basically operates is you have expeditions in the top. Those uh, are objectives that if you complete them, you will get additional loot cards that you can use to spend on um, items and upgrades for the city structures. Um, the next section here is the NPC conquering area. So we will start our game actually by placing four NPC cards that are off the top of the week deck, like so. And we'll be able to try to conquer those once we begin playing. And then, um, then the last section is for the city structures where you will be able to either upgrade them, upgrade them open up additional loot options using the special features of the different city uh, structure buildings or converting those cubes into additional resources. So to get started here, we're gonna take our initial deck and we are gonna draw, uh, we are gonna place down um, four hands of four cards. Um, so regardless of uh, the number of players that are actually playing the game, you will always do this. So whether you're playing solo or anyone else, you will always pull four decks um, or four hands with four cards. So I'm just laying them out here. I'm going to place one to the side over here, kind of going down um, in a vertical direction, just because it's going to be a little easier for you guys to see what is going on um, if I do it this way. Okay, and then we can put the city struck, uh, the city deck there back. Okay, so we look at our cards. We choose which um, deck we are going to start with. Um, I think we will start with this deck over here or this hand over here. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to do an expedition. I'm going to try to get this uh, Aramoff. Uh, section and I want to complete this section one so I can get additional uh, cubes and loot. So I'm going to get um, a total of six force between this card and this card. And then the three spycraft, which is six and three spycraft, 
we put these in the discard and then we plop those there to mark that we have successfully complete that uh, expedition. And uh, just so you know, you can only do one or the other. You can't do like the first one and then come back and uh, try to fill in for the second one. You kind of have to do it all. And when you spend your cards, they all go to one type of objective. You're not kind of like splitting them up between multiple things. Okay, so that leaves us with uh, one card left here. We can either keep it uh, to use an interrupt ability or we can spend it. Um, I think for right now, I'm gonna just spend this and I'm gonna put it in the, um, probably the natural lab here just cause that's a pretty uh, good ability here that's on the natural lab to change loot cards, which can be uh, pretty beneficial later. Okay, so we're gonna look at uh, the next thing that we can do here. Um, we really want to probably get some NPCs. Uh, the reason I say that is the NPCs, especially early on the game, are uh, pretty powerful because they provide these quest power benefits. And uh, at the beginning of the game, all your initial guys don't even actually have um, any quest power. So getting a NPC for all of your heroes uh, is probably one of the strongest things I think you can do at the beginning of the game. Just, you know, kind of tip. Uh, so I'm going to spend um, three force here and three hands. And that will allow us to purchase uh, Ranga of the spinning axes here. You'll see because she is three force and three hands up here at the top corner. And that's the cost that it takes to buy her. So we will place her in the discard pile to show that we've gotten it. So we have two left, uh, which is a total of six spy craft. Um, we can kind of see if uh, there's something else we could do. So we could do another expedition. We have uh, a six spy craft here and then three books. Um, let's see if there is maybe Maybe it's not the most optimal move, but we'll use two interrupts here. So a two book and a two book, which is four. It's a little bit extra than what we need, but with these two spy graphs of so four cards, um, maybe, like I said, not the most optimal move, but we will get uh, four there. Um, so the good thing about this is since we have four cubes here, uh, when we do get to the spending phase, we'll actually get one additional loot card because it says uh, for each three cubes, you draw one extra loot card. There's something pretty similar here in the NPCs where you can draw, uh, if you conquer three NPCs, you'll get an additional loot card. Okay, so this deck is finished. We're going to go and we can go to either one. Um, let's see what else we have here. There's a spy craft. Do we have any book? Nope, no book there. Uh, so we can't get this card. Hands and force. Uh, we do that. We do have that one. So let's do this hand. We'll do Iron Hand Soldier uh, for three force and the Iron Hand Diplomat for three hands. And we will purchase this guy here. That leaves us with uh, three left and three um, uh, and, and a two interrupt. So kind of looking at what we have left here. If we, we, if we could get more, that'd be good. But maybe uh, maybe we, won't, we don't have a book, so we can't do that one. Um, so we might just kind of, we're kind of getting maxed out already. As you get further in the game, you'll be able to accomplish more things. Uh, but at the beginning, that's a little bit harder just because you don't have a lot of powerful cards yet. So like hero cards are powerful, but then there's more that will that will uh, be stronger as we get through. Okay, so since this was the hand that's going, there's the three spy craft here. Let's just spend that um, and we will spend it, um, I guess, so we either have to do here or we have to do here at the tavern, tavern or the iron hand outpost. Um, let's go with the tavern. 
um, just because, yeah, we'll be able to most likely spend some more stuff there. Okay, and so then we have three hands, three spike craft, and three hands. Or let's see if we can upgrade the tavern, just because um, that's... So you're, when you play this, you want to kind of have an objective in mind. What is it that you want to accomplish? Um, so for me, it's getting resources, getting some NPC cards, and then at least trying to get one upgrade just because those uh, city uh, card upgrades are good. And at level one, all the armor or weapons you can get is level zero, which does you no help at the beginning. So you have to upgrade first before you can start unlocking like level one armor, which will get you better armor than what you start with. Okay, so kind of going back to this hand here, um, we have uh, the three hands or six hands here and a spy craft. Let, let, let's put it just all in the tavern. So we'll spend all three of those there. That will give us four on the tavern, one on the natural lab. Okay, so the playing phase has ended. We have uh, used all of our hands and cards, and uh, now we are ready to move on to the spending phase. So in the spending phase, I usually just go from top to bottom. So we have one, two, three, four um, uh, expeditions completed, which will give us one bonus which means we will get a total of, and I'll try to show it over here, um, we will get a total of five loot cards for that. And uh, <laughs> I did not actually shuffle my loot cards very well. Um, so don't worry too much about what's going on here with that. But uh, if you shuffle it better, you should get a better mix. I will say gems are, and this is actually in the rule book, the number of cards there are for the different loot, but gems are the rarest and gold is the most plentiful. Okay, so we pull these off here like that to indicate we have now used that. Um, we completed two, but we didn't get enough for that bonus. So then these guys will just go back into the week one deck and then that'll be it for them. And now we are down here at the city structures to see uh, what we can do. So one thing I did not um, mention earlier is before this, we actually would have started with some loot cards from the quest that we played before we got to this city phase because you'll play one quest before that. Um, so we can, you know, at least pretend maybe we, we got some materials here. Um, Let's just say we got, you know, like three three more cards from the initial quest. And of course, it's just just more wood. <laughs> um, so not really a great uh, example here. But um, so if we wanted to do an upgrade, we would need uh, two iron and three gems. Well, we do have a uh, cube here we can use at the natural lab. So we'll spend that and we can convert at least two of these to gems so then you go to your deck and then you basically pull in uh, two gem cards in place of these two wood cards um, so we're technically short one um, one gem and then one iron um, so just in the well i guess you know what let's let's do one thing here what that we can do so we can convert uh two of these that's uh, an option here convert two of these to a, another gem so that will give us three and uh and then we have one more iron that we technically need to do this. Um, so just in the interest of kind of more teaching than necessarily being it, you know, completely correct here. Um, let's just pretend that one more of these cards was instead of just getting all wood like I did because I did not actually shuffle these cards uh, really well at all before we, uh, we started. Um, let's just pretend that we had that instead. Um, so we have three gems, two uh, iron. We spend one mana cube, as you see on here. So we'll take that off. That leaves us down to one there. 
Um, so we will now upgrade the tavern to level two, spending these resources so they go back in this loot deck, which I will <laughs> clean up later. Um, and then now it would allow us uh, to purchase level one armor, but we also get better attack cards. Also a thing to note is the ability here for tavern two uh, is actually slightly better than what tavern one was, which was the same amount of resources, but you actually get to draw one more hero card. So three heroes and add one to your character deck. Um, so we have improved our chances of getting a hero that we want through that. Um, so anyway, we will do the last part here to spend this last cube, which is opening two armor. Okay, so we're back here. I have gotten uh, my uh, range character armor here. They're all level one, as you'll see. Uh, so yeah, I suggest, you know, if you're going to play this, Make sure you have your uh, your armor out uh, and weapons out because I forgot to do that from making this. But um, so anyway, since we spent that one cube, it says we get to open two of the ranged armor type, which matches the picture on here. And basically open just means it makes it available to purchase. So we will flip two cards over here. So let's look at them a little bit closer. So we have the arcane tunic which is two gems and a gold. And this one is also two gems and a gold. Um, unfortunately, we don't have you know the resources that we would need to purchase that in this one. So that's why this like natural lab uh, uh, ability is actually pretty strong. And, and that one also gets stronger as you level up the natural lab. So uh, just keep that in mind. Um, and uh, anyway, so we would spend resources to purchase this if we did have, you know, the two gems and then a gold, uh, just pretending that these were, then um, we would get to pick, you know, one of these cards. Uh, let's choose this one where we get the priest vest so that whoever, whichever range character, which is either a healer, shooter, controller, or uh, commander here, will be able to equip this card and they will get five additional health to start the quest. And uh, when they get attacked, they will be able to heal eight to an ally. So that's a little better there than I think it's like a shielded five. So that's uh, definitely uh, an improved card there. So we would then theoretically keep this card. And then at the end here, now this goes back into the deck. And so the next city phase, we would have to re-unlock it, uh, basically open cards again to be able to purchase that. Anyway, so that is the city phase uh, playthrough. Hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, kind of helped clarify what's going on. If you have questions about the city phase, definitely ask in the comments section and I will try to answer those. Uh, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All the, uh, the help you guys can to support me, I very much appreciate. So anyway, that is it. We'll see you at the next one.